Anytime you're also ready. a Spice Boy. Number one, brother. Yeah, where are we with the Spice Boys right now? Ah, uh, you know what? We've, I think, what's her name? Um, Scary Spice, she just settled the divorce, so we're good. Okay, good. We're gonna get you guys back in the game now. Okay, good. Thought they were gonna try to sue us or something. Yeah, but you know, you, you're, you're taking care of us. Yeah. Um, all right, so I, my first question, obvious question is, is when, when Ridley announced that he was replacing Kevin, what message did that send to Hollywood and how actually powerful was that? Yeah, you know, Ridley was very clear. Um, forget about all this other stuff, due process. You know, these accusation, accusations were, were very serious. And, you know, uh, first and foremost, you need to put the focus on the victims. But, you know, that also, you know, there was a focus on a film that 800 people worked on and worked really hard on and really felt, you know, this was something that everybody else should still not be, um, they, their work should still be rewarded. And so he wanted to make sure that the film would be complete and come out on time. And uh, that turned my whole world completely upside down because I had just finished the film, was starting another film in five days, uh, had lost 30 pounds from my movie and had a beard and uh, had Thanksgiving plans and all of those things. But, you know, Ridley came to my hotel and told me what he wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. And I said, absolutely, I support him 100%. You can't say no to Ridley Scott. I didn't say no the first time and I won't say no the next time. Um, so, okay, let's, I mean, you have a couple bucks now. You've made some money. How does money change people? But also, how do you stay humble when you ha do have a lot of money? It's tough. It's tough. You know, it's one of those things where I remember, look, I think Getty did not want to, you know, set a precedent in paying, you know, these outrageous ransom demands, um, knowing that, you know, it may just start a landslide of these kind of things happening. Uh, I remember having a conversation with a family member the other day saying if I gave you and everybody else every time they asked, I probably wouldn't be able to put food on my table tonight. So there is that constant barrage of people coming from every angle. Um, but, you know, it's uh, also, I, I'm very fortunate, and I know that the only way to continue to, to make money is by working and doing good work. So uh, I tried to be as generous as possible, but also, uh, you know, I don't really have too many other things to fall back on. You know, I didn't, uh, you know, get my MBA, so I got I to gotta be a little bit frugal myself. You keep forgetting your music career, Mark. I will go, but you know, did you know that I had a song? I have a song on Eminem's new album. No. Yes, on Revival. Check it out. It's called The Heat. And me and uh, Eminem, John C. Riley. I didn't want to brag about it, but I am back in the music game. Um, with the number one rapper of all time ever. Wait, so do you rap on it? You gotta check it out. Is the Funky Bunch there? Funky Bunch is not there. Where are they right now? Uh, the one of them is here outside. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Clooney gave his 14 best friends a million dollars. I heard that. Will Mark Wahlberg be doing that for his best friends? Uh, I'm gonna focus on giving the Spice Boys a very expensive uh, signing bonus. So let's focus on that first. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Night and the Street comes on. <gasps> what episode? What was she doing? Was, what was well, Jen she doing? She was with Graham, of course. Naturally. Um, and, you know, she and was... Tell me more. Tell she me more. She was, what like, talking, talking to about? Graham, and Graham was having an issue, because it's so funny. I used to watch that show, like, religiously when I was a kid. Anyways, Andrew Love the Creek. Your name, uh, Andrew Fox. You love the Creek. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I have a soft spot in my heart for it, too. <laughs> um, and for especially for Graham's. I mean... Come on. Um, uh, so uh, obviously, first question is, is you were very ab outspoken about what happened and what went down with Kevin, but I want to know what message did it send to Hollywood about the replacement of an actor because of wrongdoings? You know, I think that, uh, I don't know if it's a message that I'm, that I'm 100%, uh, it's not necessarily a Hollywood message. I think it's, and anywhere, anytime, any place kind of message to predators that people are really talking and things will be said, things will be done, and um, the climate is changing. That all of these stories, all of these people are combining their voices and saying, thinking that it was something that was private. And actually, it turns out it's something that's incredibly universal. So it's not really just a message that I hope resounds in Hollywood. It's a message that I hope resounds. Um, and this was just our tiny little part. I'm not saying that this was some 
heroic act. This was made possible by um, money. This was made possible by, by a financier saying, you know what? Yes, this is the right thing to do. And that was very brave on his part. Like, that's his money. Um, and that's him saying that this is the right thing to do. But it doesn't take away from the people who were personally and directly affected. Um, this doesn't do anything to ease their pain and suffering. It's just a little stand uh, on our part of saying this behavior shouldn't be tolerated, it shouldn't be accepted, and if it can be, um, you know, erased, it should be. You know, obviously this film centers around money. You know, you have a couple bucks now. I'm sure you've done very well over the years. But I want to know... Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're doing okay. But I want to know, you know, we're both probably around people that have lots of money. How do you stay humble when you have so much money or when someone has all the money in the world? What do you have to do? Um, well, I think... I don't know that I know, you know, the people that I know that I'm friends with, money's an issue and money's a problem and money's a struggle. Um, and, and I think that the greatest, and that, that struggle I think is the greatest thing that can happen to a person. Easy come, easy go. Who wants something without understanding the kind of work that it takes to sustain that? And for me, the experiences that I hold as dear and as important as any success that I've experienced are the failures that I have pushed through and the times when things were scarce um, because it made me determined and it made me strong. Wow, you're giving me- I know, I think like the best thing that can happen to you is the worst thing that can happen to you that doesn't actually kill you. So- So what doesn't kill you make you stronger? Just go there and find your way back. Um, what advice would you give to people going through these tough times? What would you say? I think in a way, somebody, I forget where the quote is from, but I read it some years ago. And they said, if you find yourself in hell, the best thing to do is keep moving forward. You just can't stop. You just can't give up. You can't say that just because something is one way today that it's going to be that way tomorrow, and you just have to keep walking. And sometimes that looks like just continue to get out of bed, continue to eat three meals a day, um, continue to do very basic, life-affirming things until you can move on to bigger picture things. Thank you so much. I Pleasure. love the movie. Thank you so I much. Love, and I 